The main Neutron 3 channel strip plugin packs a lot of features into a relatively small footprint. Before looking at the individual processors, let's take a look at the overall layout of the plugin. You could break up the Neutron channel strip into four distinct sections. At the top, you'll find the preset menu, along with access to the undo list, the options dialog, and the help. There's also a field for naming the particular instance. This is used by the plugin's intelligent analysis and display features. The Mix Assistant button enables two of Neutron's intelligent processing and mixing features. I'll cover all of that later in the course. Just below is the signal chain area, showing the processor slots. You can have EQ, two compressors, transient shaper, exciter, gate, and the new sculptor module. Here you can enable and disable each one, or remove it with the X. The mix slider allows for parallel processing, and individual presets can be saved and called up specifically for that processor type. You can drag the modules to reorder them, and if you're not using all the modules, a click in the empty slot at the right lets you add additional modules, until you hit the maximum complement. Below that is the main work area, where the currently selected modules displays and controls are accessed. Most of the modules include spectral displays, histograms, or both. Note, a real-time histogram shows the effect of dynamics processing over a scrolling waveform. The compressor, gate, exciter, and transient shaper can be operated as either single-band or multi-band processors, with up to three bands. Multi-band settings are usually made at the top of the main work area by hovering over that area and clicking to create new bands and dragging to adjust their crossover frequencies. Besides the individual band controls, each band has bypass and solo buttons and can be removed via a click on the X within that band. I'll cover all the details as I go through each of the modules in the next several videos, but first there's one more place where Neutron offers users some intelligent analysis to help get started with the various mix processes. In each of the main processors, you'll find a pair of buttons to the right, just above the main display, a learn button and a reset button. These have basically the same function for all the effects. For example, in the EQ, if you hit the Learn button, Neutron will analyze that track's audio as it plays, and simply arrange the position of the EQ frequency nodes, placing them at points that its analysis suggests would be good frequencies at which to apply EQ. This is based on the analysis of aspects of the audio like harmonic content, areas of resonance, and sibilance. This feature doesn't apply any EQ, it simply places the nodes in useful spots to speed along the user's manual efforts at addressing what it thinks may be potential problem areas. Experienced mixers may have already developed a pretty good ear for identifying target frequencies for EQ, but less experienced ones could find this extremely helpful. In the other processors, this function is only active when multiband processing is enabled. It'll again analyze the audio and automatically set what it suggests may be optimal crossover points for the two or three bands. And once more, no auto-processing is done, it just offers these settings as starting points. In all processors, the reset button simply restores the nodes or crossover points to the default values. On the right is the output section. Most of this area is taken up with the input and output level meters. These should be familiar to any users of Isotope's other products, like Ozone. They show both average and peak levels, along with numerical indications of these levels. The output section is also where you access the final output limiter, where you can choose among several of Isotope's well-respected limiter algorithms. Finally, at the bottom are some additional basic mixing controls. I'll look at all this in more detail later in the course. There are a few settings in the Options dialog box that are worth taking a brief look at. In the General tab, if True Bypass is enabled, then whenever a module is bypassed, it'll stop adding latency and release its CPU overhead. You can turn off the rollover pop-up tooltips, but unlike some implementations, these work on enough of a delay that they're not intrusive, and they can be helpful, so you might as well leave them on. There are also several global metering options. For the input and output meters, RMS plus peak is the default, but for post-production applications, you can change that to short-term plus peak, which gives a readout that relates to modern broadcasting standards requirements for loudness normalization. For the spectrum curves seen dancing in most processor displays, you can alter the ballistics. Slowing them down can sometimes provide an easier to follow readout of the frequency balance, which may be useful for modules that alter that balance, which is most of them since they're all optionally multiband processors. You can also view the spectrum in third octave and other displays.
Each of the individual main modules has its own preferences. For most of them, it's an option as to the type of crossover employed when the processor is run in multiband mode. The EQ has a few additional settings. So with that overview out of the way, let's move on to a look at each of the individual processors, starting with the EQ.